of America. Welcome to the Savage Nation. It's final. It's done. It's over. The turning point has been passed. The tipping point has been reached. We are now becoming Venezuela and on the way to becoming Castro's Cuba. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Here are the questions for the day. Who will pay for the fraud, waste, and corruption called Obamacare? Number three is Roberts compromised. Number four, today we investigate his medication and its effects on his cognition. Number five, what can you do? The answer is nothing. Sleep is the best revenge. When in doubt, don't exercise, get horizontal. Why do I say that? Because many of you are being misled into believing that if only you'll elect a Republican, things will change. Well, let me remind you of something. Roberts is the spawn of Bush. Roberts is a compromised Supreme Court justice. I am the only one in the media who told you on Wednesday what was going to happen on, fr on Thursday. I told it to you Tuesday. Do you remember? I was off yesterday. I was on Tuesday. I took yesterday off because I saw this coming. And the reason I saw it is because they telegraphed it. And how they telegraphed it was they let that compromised beast called Roberts read the opinion about legalizing amnesty for well over a million point two illegal aliens. And so I tell you again, ladies and gentlemen, we are now becoming Venezuela and on the way to Castro's Cuba. And all of you smart liberals sitting up there on your high horses, who is going to pay for the fraud, waste, and corruption called Obamacare? Do you have any idea what this is going to cost you? You haven't any idea. All you think is that it's a good thing because Obama wanted it. Well, let me tell you something else. Your life is over as you know it. America is over as you know it. So let's talk about the issues today as they came down. Roberts himself compromised himself. That is clear. But Roberts criticized himself and has no logic in what he said. Listen to what this fool Roberts on the Supreme Court said today. Here is what he said. He said that it is a tax. He said it's a tax, but it wasn't written as a tax. So if it wasn't written as a tax, how could he say it was a taxation that he was passing? It was clearly in the Commerce Clause. Listen to what Roberts wrote. He said the following, and i got to find it exactly so that we don't uh, miss the statement. I don't have it right in front of me, I'll be honest with you. It's a very hot day, po possibly one of the most important shows I will ever do for you because I will argue clearly for you that the individual mandate within Obamacare is not only unconstitutional, as I proved in trickle up poverty, based upon the Schechter case, which was a clear repudiation of Obama's grandfather, FDR, in the 1940s, I am telling you that I know more about the law than Justice Roberts, because my mind is more clear, my mind is more rational, my mind is less just uh, uh, juggled up with, uh, with politics than theirs are. And I am telling you right now, Roberts is the reason this happened. Roberts is on medication, and we're going to prove it on the show today. But the fact of the matter is, by forcing people to buy insurance, whether they want to or not, it will bankrupt America permanently. Who will pay for this? Who is going to pay for the fraud, the waste, and the corruption that is called Obamacare? You're telling me that they're going to control it? You mean the very same people who won't control the Medicare fraud, the Medicare mills that I've been pointing out on this show? Try the Medicare mills in San Francisco, and they won't even look at those. You're telling me they're not going to have fraud, waste, and corruption in this? You're crazy. Let me tell you something else. This is a national health care system. This is Castro care. This is what every communist dreams of. This is what every socialist dreams of. This is the pie in the sky that they all dream of, and he did it. And the reason Roberts voted with the psychotic Ginsburg, the incompetent at any speed because they don't have the IQ for it, Sotomayor and Kagan put in there simply to be kangaroos on the kangaroo court. The reason Roberts did this is anyone's guess. So I'll ask you this. Here's the first question of the day, and no one can answer it. Do you think Roberts is compromised because the Chicago machine has something on him? Or as I think... It is his medication that has affected his cognition. On the way to the radio station today, I stopped off at the University of California Medical Center and visited a world-famous neurologist who I know. And we talked about Obamacare. He said to me, check out Robert's history with epilepsy. I said, what does that have to do with his uh, vote today? He said, Michael, he said his cognition is affected by his epile epilepsy medicine. He said... The New York Times, he said, find the original article from the New York Times back in 07 after Roberts was appointed. I said, well, why? He said, because after Roberts had a seizure, 
they said, they implied in the New York Times that his medication for his seizure disorder will cloud his judgment and affect his cognition. They were afraid, in other words, that he would be too conservative. Little did they know that he would be one of them. You'll notice today there was no talk about Robert's cognitive uh, dissonance nor Robert's cognitive disorder. Okay, so we're going to talk about those things. And now I'm going to ask you a few other questions. Has anyone in the conservative media, anybody, can you name anybody who predicted this last, uh, last Tuesday? No. I will also say to you that one of the reasons this happened is because of Rush Limbaugh and the Republican uh, media complex that refuses to acknowledge Michael Savage, Savage's genius. I argued this case in Trickle Up Poverty. Many of you bought the book. There is an entire chapter which explains that this is unconstitutional. But because of the jealousy and the hatred of Rush Limbaugh, mainly jealousy on his part, and the hatred of the conservative media for Michael Savage, the last original voice in this country, that chapter was not well read. That chapter was not well promoted. That chapter was not well discussed in the conservative media. I blame them as much as I blame the liberals. But there's no point in arguing about that. Let's ask you this question. Now that he has absolute power, what do you fear uh, dictator Obama might do next? Let me repeat that. Now that Obama has shown himself to have absolute power, what do you fear the dictator might do next? Well, there's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth amendments to deal with, aren't there? First Amendment, speech, religion. He hasn't meddled with that yet, has he? But he has a model for that. The model is Canada, the European Union, and, and the UK, where there is no First Amendment. Expect changes with regard to freedom of speech. Second Amendment, the big one, right to bear arms. Mark my words. Just as I told you on Tuesday, he would do this on Thursday, and I was right. Mark my words. When this man is reelected the next uh, in the next election, which he will be, as sure as I'm standing here, you could see it in Romney's face. You can hear it in Romney's non-reactions -react today. You could see it in the lackluster, do-nothing Republican Congress. When this man is reelected, he will take out the Second Amendment, as sure as I'm standing here, because that's what liberals have wanted to do for well over 60 years. We'll also talk about the Third and Fourth Amendments later on. I'll ask you again, is Robert's compromised? Is Robert's cognition affected by medication? And what will Obama do next? The phone number is 1-800-449-8255. Let's start in uh, Austin, Texas. Bill, welcome to the Savage Nation. Dr. Savage, as soon as I heard this verdict or decision or whatever, I said, this is why people must listen to Dr. Savage, because he is the one that said on Tuesday, John Roberts would throw it, and he did. I am the only one who saw it coming. The only one. And remember that. The next time you hear another one of these, these right-wing blowhards tell you that they know what's going on, they don't know what's going on, they're, they're water boys for the corrupt Republican Party. Never forget that. Okay. I don't want to get angry at them today. I'm not going to get angry at all. Because as I said to you, there's very little you can do right now. The whole concept of separation of powers is now dead in America. There is no separation of powers. When you can have a compromised, cognitively impaired justice like Roberts, write an opinion that is unto itself illogical. You understand that there's no longer a check and balance in this country. How many other members of the Supreme Court are on drugs? How many members of Congress are on drugs? How many people who are writing away your life are on drugs? You don't have an answer to that, do you? But if you take a job at a corporation, you have to pee in a cup. I demand drug testing for everybody in Congress. I'll be right back. Look, before you get lost in the uh, minutiae here, the fact of the matter is we are now becoming Venezuela and on the way to Castro's Cuba. I know how, fa how, far left, uh, how the far left thinks, and I know what their ultimate end game is. They want your guns, they want uh, your freedom of speech quelled, and they want to own you from cradle to the grave. The keystone of all of this has always been nationalized health care. It's gone back to a, a very uh, a deep period of American history where let's, go, let's not go any further than Kennedy. Today, Nancy Pelosi had the nerve to say that Kennedy can now rest in peace because he finally will see from heaven that we have the nationalized health care he has dreamed of. 
So what more Kennedy himself would be proud of this act today? So how did it happen? How did a, an appointee of George Bush side with the most radical left wing of the Supreme Court? Well, first of all, don't be surprised by that because I told you George Bush was a fiscal socialist in the latter years of his regime. But let's not talk about Bush right now. He's history. Let's talk about Roberts. I'm going to tell you something that you're not going to hear anywhere else that you must pay attention to. It's well known that Roberts, unfortunately for him, has suffered from uh, epileptic seizures. Therefore, he has been on medication. Therefore, neurologists will tell you that medication used for seizure disorders, such as epilepsy, can introduce mental slowing, forgetfulness, and other cognitive problems. And if you look at Robert's writings, you can see the cognitive dissociation in what he is saying. And I'll read it to you. It's two paragraphs. Try to focus. In the ruling, the Supreme Court decided that the most controversial provision, the individual mandate, which makes you buy health insurance, is valid as a tax, even though it is impermissible under the Constitution's Commerce Clause. However, it was not written as a tax. So Roberts wrote this. He said, in this case, however, it is reasonable to construe what Congress has done as increasing taxes on those who have a certain amount of income but choose to go without health insurance. Roberts continues and says, such legislation is within Congress's power to tax. But he's following from a point that is irrational. Who knows that Congress... Wait, wait a minute. When did Congress say this was on, about increasing taxes? Answer, never. Congress never said this was about increasing taxes. Roberts then goes on in his irrationality and wrote, wrote this, quote, The federal government does not have the power to order people to buy health insurance. He says that. The federal government does have the power to impose a tax on those without health, health insurance. But this wasn't about a tax. It was not written as a tax. It was clearly never a tax. And then, to top it all off, to show you the cognitive dissonance in Robert's brain that is going on, he concludes by saying that um, Congress ex exercised an authority it held to assess a tax rather than create any new taxing authority. Now, what does that mean? Can anyone figure that out? Congress exercised an authority it held to assess a tax rather than create any new taxing authority. What does that mean? This is a turning point in American history. We will never be the same again. This is the most left-wing piece of legislation that will change America forever. The law calls for an expansion of eligibility for Medicaid, which involves spending by the federal government and the states, which will bankrupt every state in the land. Every illegal alien in this country will cash in on this. Every bum in this country will now have gold-plated medical care. Every corrupt immigrant, whether it be from Russia or any other country, that has already sacked this nation through Medicare and Medicare fraud will now do so in spades. Let's go on. The fact of the matter is, even though every poll shows that the majority of Americans, by a large majority, wanted this to be struck down, once again, we no longer live in a representative government where the legislature or the executive or the judicial does what the people want. None of them will do anything that the people want. The fact of the matter is only the losers on the bottom wanted this to happen. And of course, and of course, the, the corruption that is inherent in countries like Sicily will now become corrupt, uh, uh, inherent in America. What you see in a country like Sicily, mark my words, within five to ten years, America will be just like Sicily. And I'll tell you something else. Many of you don't even understand what Sicily was. It was never, it was not always a corrupt nation. Sicily, you know, you say, oh, mafia, Sicily, this, that. It wasn't always that way. It was not always that way. But once the gangsters got control of Sicily, they destroyed the country from within. And that is exactly the model that is being used in my analysis here in the United States of America. You are watching The Godfather and The Sopranos unfold right before your eyes. So don't get lost in any of the fine points of the argument. You are seeing the seizure of a nation and the abuse of a nation unlike any you've ever seen in your lifetime. And this is just the beginning. The fact of the matter is, you ain't seen nothing yet. 1-800-449-8255, michaelsavage.com. I'll take your calls at any time on any topic related to this. 
We are now becoming Venezuela and on the way to Castro's Cuba. Number two, liberals, who will pay for this fraud, waste, and corruption called Obamacare? Number three, we investigate Robert's medication and its effects on his cognition. Number five, what can you do? Answer, nothing. Don't listen to a word the Republicans tell you. They're going to try and use this. Oh, when you elect us, we'll overturn Obamacare. Well, use your head. What do you mean they'll overturn Obamacare? How? Let us say, for argument's sake, that doofus Romney wins. And let us say, for argument's sake, that the Senate becomes Republican. And so what? Then what? Tell me what happens then. Tell me what happens then. The answer is it goes to the Supreme Court again. When some Democrat, let us say they, they eliminate Obamacare. So someone sues to reinstate Obamacare. It goes to the same clowns in the Supreme Court, same result. So don't listen to anything Rush Limbaugh tells you. He's just Clarabel with a big, big horn, and he works for the Republican establishment. You have no hope. Abandon all hope. There is no hope. The country is finished. It's over. Obama just drove a stake through the heart of America. That's my opinion. I'll be right back to hear your opinion. Seven. I'm not going to say the sky is falling. I'm going to tell you that the sky has fallen. Now, this is not the first president with such a centrist, centralized government, uh, Leninist mentality. America saw the same sort of government intrusion in the 1930s under President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, perhaps the worst president in American history. Like Obama, FDR skillfully leveraged the crisis of the day to usher in a number of New Deal socialist programs. And I went into this in Trickle Up Poverty. I don't want to read from the book because you will probably get bored and turn the show off and go back to something stupid and it's not going to help us. But let me summarize it for you. Using the heavy hand of government intervention, think of Lenin, think of Stalin, think of FDR. FDR instituted the National Recovery Administration, the NRA, very much like what Obama is doing. And what was FDR's goal? Under the guise of fairness, Franklin Delano Roosevelt mandated a number of regulations or codes of fair competition in order to minimize what he thought were destructive competition practices. But in reality, what FDR was doing was vilifying businessmen whose leadership had brought goods to their customers, jobs to their workers, and profits to the shareholders. Why am I rehashing this history? Because, as you'll see in a moment, buried in the dusty pages of history lies the tool that I believe Americans should have used against the Obamacare juggernaut. This is from Trickle Up Poverty, the most important book written in the last five years. And this was the case of the Schechter Poultry Company in Brooklyn, New York. It was founded by four Jewish brothers, the Schechter brothers. These first-generation immigrants migrated to America to open two kosher poultry slaughterhouses. In, in Yiddish, their last name means ritual butcher. And the value of their service was based upon the fact that they butchered chickens to conform to Jewish dietary law. In order to maintain a kosher operation, the Schechter brothers had to sort out and remove sickly or dangerously unhealthy chickens. Well, that flew in the face of the new regulations handed down by FDR's totalitarian mandate. In short, the, go the government said that they could not pick out particular birds in the transaction. In other words, the new law passed by FDR forced the Schechter brothers to sell unhealthy chickens to people who didn't want to buy them. And so they eliminated, basically they went around, they destroyed the, code, the whole object of kosher food law. So... The brothers wouldn't comply with FDR, and they were arrested and tried in court where they went head-to-head -head with the government lawyers. They went to jail. In the end, they were found guilty. They fined them a year's wage and then sent them to prison. But the story didn't end there. The Schechter brothers appealed their case, which ended up in the U.S. Supreme Court, against all odds in Schechter Poultry Corporation versus the United States. The Supreme Court unanimously ruled in favor of the Schechter brothers. The Supremes ruled that FDR's program was unconstitutional on several levels. Of primary concern was the way his National Recovery Administration program sought to regulate intrastate commerce. Constitutionally speaking, intrastate law is governed by the states and not the feds. Now here is the most important part of, of this story for you. It's from Trickle Up Poverty. Are you ready? 
The court also said that FDR's regulations were, an, were a usurpation of congressional power. After the decision was handed down and FDR was red-faced, Justice Louis Brandeis told a lawyer representing FDR's New Deal this. Here is what he said. This is the end of this business of centralization, and I want you to go back and tell the president that we're not going to let this government centralize everything. It's come to an end, close quote. See, back then we had justices who could speak plain English and tell the plain truth. Can you imagine one of our Supremes drawing a line in the sand against Obama in such a direct manner? This is how we wound up with Obama's Frankensteinian health care bill. The fact of the matter is, it was a lie from the beginning. This clearly was an abrogation of the Commerce Clause. It was not written to be a tax. And yet Roberts, in his muddled cognitive dissonance, because of his medication or because he's been compromised by the Chicago machine, completely invented the fact and said, uh, completely invented the argument that this was a tax. It was not written as a tax. He's wrong. New York, W-O-R. Walter, go ahead, please. You know, you know, Michael, you're bringing uh, Megyn Kelly's prediction on her show to, to fruition here right off the bat. Uh, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know what you're talking about. Who is that woman? What does she have to do with this, this very important case? Why are you bringing up a leg twister for, for, the, for the show today? What does she have to do with anything? Because she predicted exactly what you're doing. She predicted that the right wing was going to go after uh, Judge Roberts in any way, shape, or form. If, if well, you wait, wait, sir, 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 you're just shooting your mouth off. If you had a modicum of knowledge of what you were speaking, you wouldn't be saying that. Because it was the, the New York Times, your holy grail, that wrote in 2007 that the medication that Roberts was on would affect his judgment. Are you aware of that? And, and you're, you're just falling into the trap. Do you, do I, I, no, no, shut, no, no, shut up. If you don't respond to my arguments, I'm going to throw you off the show. Don't repeat your big lie. I'm, I'm a man. And I'm not going to let you run me down with your lies. Your holy grail, the New York Times, wrote that his medical treatment would affect his judgment in 2007 because they were trying to set him up for impeachment, fearing that he would be too conservative. And now that he's too liberal, they're not mentioning the medication and his, uh, and his insanity. I, I... All right, take a walk with your heavy breathing. That's all. And if you think I made that up, I want you to look it up. August 1st, 2007, Roberts facing medical option on second seizure. And they were parsing it and trying to say that they were compassionate about his, uh, his uh, epilepsy. But they said that he now needs to be medicated. And then the New York Times wrote, but the drugs can have troubling side effects, including drowsiness or insomnia, weight loss or weight gain, rashes or irritability, mental slowing and forgetfulness. So they were arguing in 07 that um, the medication he would be on for his seizures would affect his judgment. They were trying to establish that if Roberts was too conservative, they would try to argue he should be taken off the bench for medical reasons. But now that he's become a useful tool of the communist regime that is railroading America into the third world, uh, suddenly there's no mention of his medication. I know just what I'm talking about. There is nobody smarter than Michael Savage in the media, and never forget it. Never forget that. I don't care whether there are bigger shows or louder shows. Nobody in this country has a better show in the mass media. Nobody knows what's going on more than I do. Nobody. It's the end of America as you know it. John in Connecticut, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hello, Michael. I completely agree when you say it's the end of America. We're washed up, and here's why. What the Supreme Court has done, and Benedict Arnold in charge there at the Supreme Court has done, is to leave the door wide open so that even though the Republicans will probably be elected this time, the short-memoried Americans will refill legislature and White House with Democrats of the future, at which time they will reinstitute exactly what we're trying to get rid of right now. It's over. Um, let's talk about it in plain, practical terms. Who is going to pay for this? Who is going to pay for this? The country is already bankrupt. This crazy president is printing money like King Ludwig II of Bavaria. Who is going to pay for this? This is going to spin the deficit into the tenth fold of insanity. Who's going to pay for it? Who's going to pay for the fraud, waste, and corruption called Obamacare? Who will pay for this? All the liberals who love Obama? 
end of story. It's the end of the story. Roberts, I believe, is showing all the signs of cognitive disorder. His reasoning makes no sense. There is no reason in what he said. There was no mention in the write-up of Obamacare as a tax, and yet he quoted it as a tax, saying the government has a, uh, an, excuse me, not a right, not an obligation, uh, but the right to pass a tax, to affirm a tax. It makes no sense. He bent the law to comply with those who own him, or, or the man actually has no capacity for cognitive, uh, um, in, uh, cognitive sanity. Or something's wrong with, with this picture. Who is going to pay for this? New York, W-O-R, Steve, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi, yes, uh, you suggested on your show uh, many times that, that there should be a guard in front of a emergency rooms to keep illegals out. I, I don't know so, what you just said. Say that again. You suggested on your show that you, you want to want security guards in front of the uh, hospitals to keep illegal aliens out of emergency rooms. Okay. And yes, and isn't this, uh, is, is, I mean, what's wrong, why, why should be, and, and, and what's, they didn't commit any, I mean, why should we deny health care to people that need it? I mean, that's, that's, that's cruel. Steve, who's going to pay for it? Who's it? Well, we, well it's, uh, it's another civil rights, another, uh, uh, you know, just well, Steve, like Steve, Ryan. Steve, Steve, stop it, stop it. Who is going to pay for this? Well, uh, it's, well, the, the, uh, we're paying for the, the bailouts. We paid for the pay for Steve, bailouts. who is going to pay for giving medical care to illegal aliens who are non-citizens who put nothing into the system? Let's start with that. Who's going to pay for it? You can't do that. You can't deny people uh, treatment. What do you mean you can't? It, who's going to pay for legal. it? It's not. Why legal. do you think? Why do you think so many hospitals are going bankrupt in this country? Do you have any idea what you're talking about? It was not Do you have any idea why you pay $10 for an aspirin on your bill in a hospital? Do you have any idea why you pay $100 for a catheter that should cost a dollar in a hospital? That's so that the illegal aliens can come here and take advantage of our medical system. So how does this end, Steve? You're not, you're not capable of reason. I can hear it in your voice. You're obviously an impaired individual, and I'm not going to make fun of you. I have compassion for impaired individuals, so I'll let it go at that. I don't have to make a mockery of you. If you want to see where this ends up, don't look to Europe. Look to Cuba, and you'll see the kind of medical care that we're going to end up with in this country in 10 years. You have clinics with morons for doctors. You have a lack of medication. You have a lack of equipment. You have a lack of hospitals, hospitals that can really do the job, which is why Castro had to bring doctors in from Spain or, in fact, go to Spain. That is what's coming in this country. And I'll tell you something else. The corrupt politicians who forced Obamacare down the throats of the American people by buying the votes. If you remember what Pelosi did with her big hammer, she bought the votes by spending federal money on projects such as Bridges to Nowhere with various and sundry Congress people. Those individuals have not thought this through, or have they? Have they thought about the trillions that could be made uh, through the black market in this system? Have they thought about the trillions that can be made through the fraud, waste, and corruption uh, inherent in Obamacare? You bet they have, and you bet that's exactly why they passed it. They care as much for individuals' care. They care as much for taking care of the poor as nobody on earth does. They don't give a darn about the poor. They care only about the inherent fraud, waste, and corruption that they're going to be able to dip their beaks into, in my opinion. 1-800-449-8255. Just remember what I said to you. Amendment 10, 10th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, Bill of Rights, rather. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. This should have been attacked under the 10th Amendment. This is not a power that the Congress had. They had no right whatsoever to pass this as a tax, and that's why they didn't write it as a tax. They attached it to the Commerce Clause, which was illegal, which is why it should have been ruled as illegal. We're dealing with this on many different levels, on multiple levels. The law is wrong. Roberts is compromised, or his medication is affecting his thinking. We are also talking about the fraudsters in Congress. We're also talking about the fact that we're now on the way to becoming Venezuela and on the way to becoming Castro's Cuba. I'll take your callers now. Your calls now. Tyler, Texas, Wendy, welcome to the program. Well, I'd just like to know why you would use the words that we have no hope because you must have some kind of a solution, otherwise you wouldn't keep going. 
You wouldn't no, we have no, we have no hope. No, we have no hope. We have no hope. This gangster has ruined America. We have no hope. He is a criminal, and his entire gang is criminal. All of them. What do you think? I'm inventing this. This country has been taken over by a gang. I don't know that. I'm putting my life on the line for saying this. It's a criminal gang from Chicago running America, and they compromise Roberts. Go watch. Go watch The Sopranos, or go watch. The Godfather again, and you'll see how they do it. They got that guy in something, as sure as I'm standing here. Let me take a break. Sam.